of uh, Mr. Gedalia Ebert, who couldn't be here today because it's Saturday, it's Shabbat. So, um, and as I've been uh, basically doing much of his uh, correspondence, uh, uh, Sabbath, the Sabbath, Shabbat. Um, and um, I've been doing much of his work because he speaks Hebrewish or German, which is, uh, or Chinese English. Uh, but he's uh, an Orthodox Jew who understands what's going on in the court that none of us understand, that all this that you see is subterfuge and it is based on the Pharisee law. How are you going to dispossess the non-Jews, the, the goyim? This is a policy of nearly 3,000 years standing. Now, Mr. Ebert um, is, uh, is fluent in Hebrew, Aramaic, German, and not, not very good English. But he's telling us that when he can hold a court for nine hours, because he knows everybody, every move is done through Talmud. It's to do with uh, when Jesus says, uh, beware ye the leaven of the Pharisees. This is the leaven of the Pharisees. And this has been the game that's been going on for expropriation and world control, and uh, which is now, you're seeing all these things are all written in manuals, and I have it here uh, from 72, as uh, somebody was mentioning earlier. Edward Heath and Pompidou and Wilson. This is basically the result of running down Britain and making it into, there will be no England. Uh, Wakefield will be the biggest uh, centre of this island, basically. So everything we're seeing is a con, but it's, it's, it's colossal. United Nations, uh, Euro European Union, it is all part of a conspiracy. And I use the word, I'm not a conspiracy theorist because I know the facts. So Mr. Ebert is um, clearly, he's uh, been able to give me information that I couldn't get, although I, I know uh, a lot about the subject for the past uh, 40 odd years. Um, uh, and just to remind me while I'm looking out of the window, you have the police force there. And as I said, this, we are the police force, okay? <laughs> so that, that's, that's... I think so, they fleeced us pretty good. You know, <laughs> Oh, the police force, as you would know. So, uh, what we have the benefit of is Mr. Ebert. Now, as we're near, near to Liverpool, he was defrauded on the same sort of pegwork, and I've got much of it here. Has any, have any of you heard of a company called Collectica? No. Collectica. Yeah. Right, it's the same sort of stuff. Um, now, he was visited. Now, the story of Mr. Ebert was he had a property portfolio in the mid 1990s including 1,200 properties in Liverpool, worth over 10.6 billion, okay? Now, what's going on is money laundering needs big lumps of property. How they can convert money uh, quickly is that they need, they identify a portfolio, somebody's property. David Fab, of course, who I went to give evidence with him to Lawrence Tomlinson. His business was worth between two to three, 400 million. Uh, but the accounting companies like uh, uh, Deloitte, they're all part of a game, and this is just a, c a component in how you steal. And um, so it is, it's, let's be aware that this is what's going on. We're part, we're the, the meat in the sandwich, if you like, but we've got to stop it. And what's been said uh, earlier uh, is brilliant because it's confirming. Now, I've just done, I've done letters to the Attorney General, I've written to the Queen for Mr. Ebert. So how did, he, how did he lose his business? Is that one of his partners, it was done mainly through Israel. The Israeli, the Israeli banks are very much involved in what we're seeing. So uh, we've got to be aware, HSBC and all these groups are all, they have an agenda. And um, so, but Mr. just to come back to Mr. Ebert, um, he had a visit from a bailiff. Again, he's been, I was in court with him, we've been to the High Court, I've filmed and everything, it, the kangaroo system. He's actually, he was uh, charged, but the, but the actual document was issued from Highbury Magistrates Court, Highbury Corner, and uh, he's charged in Hendon, and they, they lock him up and we have to give 500 quid to get him out of the, out of the, the cells. Uh, but, uh, but the point is, he had, we have a letter from Highbury Corner saying he's never appeared in that court. So we've got evidence, but it is a mafia. This is a mafia game. Uh, documents are done, and people are involved in the court. They're, they're divvying, divvying up what they're doing. This is the, the swag. It is criminal.
everything about. Uh, so, um, so Mr. Ebert uh, had uh, a visit from Collectica, and of course he knows the law, and he, and he was he knew the stamps, and he knows everything. He's absolutely a brilliant thing, and he's a resource for Fleece. He's one of our group. Okay, he's part of Fleece Force, I'd say. Okay, so as it happens, uh, living in Gold, Goldberg's Green. Um, the bailiff that came, Collectica came, and we saw him off. And uh, uh, basically, um, then the following week, I'll not mention the name, but another bailiff came, who happened to be Jewish. Now, who speaks Hebrew. So, um, he said, this explains why, he said, everywhere I'm going, I'm getting the same story. Everywhere he's going. So this was some corroboration from inside the system. Now, uh, the people who are done with the, we've got the judge, a judgment for them to produce the evidence in court. So we've managed to turn the thing around. So we've got to use the courts against them. But, but like you're saying, it is down to us just to actually join up the dots and work together strongly. Um, so as it's happened, we were able to find out, and this is corroboration that we would never get otherwise. So, the Mr. Abbott's um, properties, letters to the Attorney General, I've literally got a stack this high, all to do with the, these cases. Um, with uh, uh, David Fab, who will come, and Guy, who have been doing sterling work, we just have to know it is the game. Now, to go back a little bit of history, I finished this book called The Other Road to Serfdom for a man who was locked up in 1939. To 1945, for daring to say, to point out and prove, and I've got all the documents, that the Bank of England had rearmed Germany in the interwar years. Montague and Norman, governor of the Bank of England, Churchill was going to hang him for treason. So behind all this is 1932 Bank of International Settlements, the setting up of this whole thing for Europe and world domination with government in Jerusalem. <clears throat> and. Um, so Mr. Swan was able to find and give me information, and uh, so this book uh, was declined by 168 publishers uh, in the West, Australia. I was in India doing work in India, uh, which J.K. Galbraith said is a fully functioning anarchy, and it is. Um, and I got this book published, but since publication, all the shipments that they bring in for universities suddenly stopped was having problems with documentation until any books like this were taken out. So what we're up against is a mafia, colossal, but we will defeat it, I'm certain. Um, Mr. Ibbett's, uh, the, the latest letter is to his lawyer. Now, there's a, there's a group called LIPS, Litigants in Person, and one of the law firms that is supposedly working for the LIPS here, yeah. Uh, but remember, read my lips, no new taxes, as George Bush said, but that's what happened. But um, the lawyer who was in charge of this case, Mrs. Abbott, see, he had a property in Cranbourne Gardens, 23, and this was taken from him by a switching of documents. Apparently, you know, the usual forms that go to land registry, and land registry are also a part of this. Land registry are intimately involved with everything. Uh, there were several ladies who have gone to, to prison because Often the things that your property may not be in your name it may have been sold to to others elsewhere in bundles, like with the you know the the dodgy mortgages, you know, the subprime stuff. So often the stuff is happening, and uh, but it is it's deadly serious. But we, we will defeat it, I'm pretty certain. But it does require these kind of meetings, and it is it's fabulous that you're here. And um, but as I say, Mr. Ebert would have come, but uh, but he couldn't. Uh, I have a few bits to show you. The things of, of getting him out of court and getting him out of prison. He was in what? Uh, he was in Brixton. But we wrote to the governor asking him on what charge was he under, and they couldn't give us the charge because he's put under a certain order for paedophiles and rapists. So he that's how you get him out. He's put in prison, and he's out of the way, and. Um, so we are up against this uh, problem, but it is now. This is what's required. We want now, uh, basically, a movement to start, and we need to become active, uh, and even politically active, uh, in the, this, my sense. Now, um, 
as I mentioned about um, Mr. Ebert not being here, um, um, I met uh, my sister and cousin converted to Judaism. And um, I converted to Islam. So, because I was interested in debt and interest, see, debt should never be allowed. Interest is forbidden. And all the debts and everything, well, debt should be cancelled in the seventh year under the law of Jubilee, the biblical law. Before the Bible, 2400 BC, this history goes from 2400 BC. Debt was automatically written off in the seventh year. Otherwise, society self-destructs. Debt must never be allowed to ex expend or go beyond seven years. So I met David Dimbleby and asked why the BBC was so against religious groups you know, on this issue. And David, Dim uh, David Dimbleby was on Sheffield Station, just in news night, so I whizzed down. And I said, he said, so he said, what's your interest? So I said, well, my sister and cousin converted to Judaism, <coughs> and I converted to Islam. And he said, well, you must have a long weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so I gave him that. So this point is that we've been encouraged to fight against each other. Uh, I'm going to mention just one point. In the presentation I have, and I've just, I sent this now, interestingly, <coughs> was that on Passover, I sent this to, it's Jews for Jesus, a group who are people who are now following Jesus from the Jewish community. Because they understand from scripture uh, that the Messiah, uh, there's a, something would happen on this day. But anyway, I'll not bore you with that. But the issue is that I sent this to everybody. My own MP, who is the Minister for Transport, Patrick McLaughlin, who will be very embarrassed. Uh, but um, I also sent it out and I had a reply to it. Now the headline is, Jews for Jesus, what it means, you know, today. So I sent, and I got a reply back from the uh, mail marshal to... Um, what's his name? Uh, Hogan Howe, who is the head of the Met, objecting to the, this. And, and this. So it's given me the opportunity to send him, now as I've done before, maybe 150 pages asking about Grace, who has just been evicted from Pinner. You know, basically be able to feed in this sort of stuff into the system and to try and embarrass them into doing something. But we, we're going to win, uh, I'm pretty certain.